This is our first video on transparency in the coffee supply chain. In this first episode, we're going to look at the term farm gate price to understand what's actually meant by that and what additional context is needed in order to interpret that number and compare it to others. Hi everyone, I'm Carl from Cedro Alto. Today we're going to start a conversation about transparency. The desire for transparency data in the specialty coffee supply chain is becoming more and more ubiquitous. But a question that I don't think is being asked and answered often enough is why? Why do we need all these numbers? Why do we care who's earning what in a supply chain that's made up of independent economic actors, all of whom are adults running their businesses? The underlying assumption that creates this desire for transparency, for information about how their supply chain is working and how resources are divided uh, could, could have different origins, one of which is uh, poverty among coffee producers. Now, this isn't the case 100% of the time, but it's no secret that there are coffee producing families that are enduring poverty. Uh, specialty coffee, it's, it's no secret that its value, its price to the end user could be two, three, four, many times the value of, of commodity grade coffee. So if one is spending more, many times more on, on a consumer product, uh, it's understandable that there's a desire to make sure that their purchase is not contributing to the poverty of others. So in any case, supposing that one wants to get to the bottom of their supply chain and really understand how the money is being divided up, they need data. That data needs to be comparable. So you're asking this data from your supply chain partners, your importer, exporter, consolidator, roaster, whoever. Uh, you ask one for this information, they give you one number, and uh, then you're going to ask others for the same information, uh, they're going to give you other numbers. So you need to know that those numbers were calculated in the same way, that you're comparing apples to apples. If not, it's really difficult to be able to qualify one supply chain and know how it compares to another one. Transparency data also has to be contextualized. So we have to know what that number means to the person on the receiving end of it. You know, just, just a number uh, in dollars, euros, pounds, whatever, uh, isn't going to tell us anything about the reality for the person that's receiving that. We need to know what product they're turning over in exchange for that amount of currency and what it really means to, to them uh, as people. So as this notion of transparency first became popular among specialty coffee roasters, the number that one would often see and still does often see on, on bags of coffee, on, on websites, on reports, what have you, is, is the FOB price, free on board. So that's what the exporter is charging to the importer. The FOB price is important because without a high FOB price, there can't be a high farmer price. Without uh, an above commodity market FOB price, the farmer can't be earning above commodity price. However, a high FOB price does not in any way guarantee a high farmer price. As this conversation has evolved and individuals on the consumption side of the, of the supply chain have dug in more to the, the numbers and, and actors and, and how uh, the money's divided up, there's been more desire for a farm gate price. This is the, the term uh, that we've been hearing a lot lately. Farm gate price. But this notion of farm gate price, uh, while this is, this is uh, really the number we're looking for, if our in goal in having transparency is to ensure that the farmers are earning what they deserve, uh, this number is it, but what does this number actually mean? How is farm gate price expressed? Uh, is it expressed literally, or is there a derivative number being supplied to 
consumption country actors that they can understand. Uh, for example, let's say we have a farm gate price of two dollars. USD per pound green export grade coffee. This is a very comparable price because it's uh, easily understandable for the person that's receiving the number and can compare it to uh, USD per pound from any other importer or roaster or exporter that they might be speaking with. However, this is a derivative number because a, a farmer, at least here in Colombia, is not going to be earning US dollars per pound of export grade green coffee. Farmers are going to be earning Colombian pesos per kilo or carga of dry parchment coffee. How do we get this number two dollars? How is this calculation being done? This is what makes all the difference. This is the, no, no farmer is going to be earning US dollars for green coffee. Uh, the equivalent of two US dollars per pound green coffee that, that I would express in a transparency report, for example, based on 3,000 COP Colombian pesos per USD, which is always changing. Currently, it's actually above 4,000 because the oil price is so low. Um, so for this two dollars, farmers are earning quite a lot of Colombian pesos compared to a month ago. But you know, that's another uh, subject for another day. Say it's 3,000, which has been more or less an average for the last few years. Uh, that would be equivalent to 1,286,016 Colombian pesos per carga, which is 125 kilos. In this case, dry parchment coffee. If we're talking about wet parchment or cherry, this calculation gets even more complex. So how do we get from two US dollars to 1,200,000 and some thousand Colombian pesos per, per carga? Um, how is someone paying this amount of money and expressing two dollars to a roaster in, in Indiana? Let's start at the beginning. One pound uh, would be 2.20462 uh, pounds per kilo. So, first of all, let's multiply $2 by 2.20462. This gives us $4.41 USD per kilo green. However, an exporter is the one that's going to be taking care of the dry milling process, taking dry parchment and converting that into green coffee. Uh, that's not expressed in, in the farmer price, that, that cost is not incurred by the farmer, so it doesn't um, apply to the, the farm gate. Uh, so how do we get this green coffee back into parchment? Let's say, for example, to create one bag of 70 kilos green coffee, we need 90 kilos dry parchment. This number could be anywhere from 85 to 110. Uh, and that would directly affect this conversion, the dry parchment to prepare green coffee yield and therefore affect uh, our USD per pound green coffee price. The, the lower quality, the parchment, the higher price the uh, green coffee would have because it would take us more kilos that are being purchased from farmers uh, to create one bag of, of export grade green coffee. So. 90 kilos parchment to create one bag of 70 kilos green is a 78% conversion rate. That's parchment green yield. I can't spell today. Um, so then this gives us a parchment price of $3.43 USD per kilo parchment. Now exchange rate, as we mentioned before, let's just take 3,000 uh, because we're being generous. Uh, that would give us an equivalent of 10,288 Colombian pesos per kilo parchment. Some places like in Nariño we're going to use uh, 
Colombian pesos per kilo, so things are a little bit simpler. Here, where we are in Pereira, we use arroba, so this is Colombian pesos per 12.5 kilos of green coffee, but most of the, the areas that, that I'm most familiar with, we use cargas of 125 kilos. Uh, so we then multiply this times 125 kilos per carga. And that's how we get 1,286,016 Colombian pesos per carga. So the next time someone quotes you how many dollars were paid to a farmer at the farm gate per pound of green coffee, make sure you ask them how they calculated that derivative number. What exchange rate was used? What parchment green coffee yield was used? Uh, was that yield then compensated to the farmer? Or maybe even ask them how many Colombian pesos were paid per carga, because that number is not going to change. All right, now you have some context as to what a US dollar per pound green coffee farm gate price means in Colombia. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for our next video where we're going to look at the difference between farm gate and FOB price and what's meant by farmer price. If you found this video interesting and would like to keep up with us and the content we're putting out, please subscribe to our channel. If this has brought up any additional questions or anything wasn't clear that I've been explaining here, feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll try to get to it in another video. Thanks.